Hello, everyone. Uh, so before I begin, I'll just give you a little bit of my background. So I'm an artist. I'm also a scientist, a cognitive neuroscientist, and I have a company where I merge the arts and the sciences to change the face of science communication as well as to understand the neuroscience of creativity. So I want to talk about a topic that I am really passionate about. All right, so let's make this a little interactive. How many of you have heard of the acronym STEM? Yes, a lot of people. Awesome. What about STEAM? I think it's less. No. Okay. Well, that's good. All right. So let's uh, break this down because how many of you are confused about STEM and STEAM because people don't seem to be able to make up their mind about the two? Just me? Okay. Wow. Okay. So what is STEM? STEM is about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. STEAM is about science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Now keep that in mind. So let's do a little history. Turns out that in 1957, Russian satellite Sputnik inspired innovation of technology and engineering in the US. President Eisenhower famously called for a national priority to support research science. NASA was created in 1958. Engineering graduates skyrocketed, and NSF required that science be a core of education. STEM was actually known as SMET. <laughs> Didn't sound so cool. The idea was that education had to be based on STEM disciplines as integrated disciplines that focused on real world problems. But then in 2008, John Meda, then the president of Rhode Island School of Design, actually created a movement to transform STEM to STEAM. And he said, art and design are poised to transform our economy in the 21st century like science and technology did. Well, so that means transform research policy to add art and design to STEM, encourage the integration of art into STEM, and to actually influence employers to hire artists and designers to drive innovation. Yet the divide between art and science exists. Why? I have no freaking reason. Because turns out the most enduring innovations are actually the product of the marriage between science and art. For centuries, major innovators have been implicit steamers. Think of Leonardo da Vinci, the guy who created the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. He created the flying machine and the codex on the flight of birds. Turns out that his notes and his design are the actual foundation of modern aerodynamics. He also created the Mechanical Knight. Recently, the Leonardo Lab in Milan recreated it based on his sketches on human physiology and pulley system understanding. And guess what? It works. It can stand, rise up its visor, move its arms. And there's also Sor Juan Inés de la Cruz, famous Mexican 7th century poet, playwright, and nun. She was a child prodigy. At 17, she was quizzed on mathematics, philosophy, natural science, history, literature, my god, music theory. Guess what? She aced it all. Turned out all of those disciplines influenced her works. Steve Jobs. He's known for saying, technology alone is not enough. In fact, turns out, even though he dropped out of college, he actually studied calligraphy. So the first Mac computer actually had beautiful typography. And the way Picasso took the time to break down his fleshy bull to the very single-formed bull, we know Apple went from that clunky mouse to its gorgeous ergonomic design. We also have a great example with Zaha Hadid, who unfortunately just passed away, eminent female architect. She studied math since a child. She went to art museums. She went to science museums. She was completely embodied in both art and science, and she treated solving problems like sketches. Just look at her gorgeous drawings, her buildings, her sketches, her visual art. It's the perfect marriage of color, shape, form, geometry, mathematics, architecture. You can't get better than that. And we also have in fiction our favorite Sherlock, master of deduction, father of modern criminology, was none other than what? Violinist. With scientific charts on the wall, the acid chart, bench of chemicals, the violin case leaning in the corner, and he was quite the violinist. So is it steam? Yes. Well, not really in a global sense. No, it's not the case. President Obama in his 2009 State of the Union address actually said we should invest to promote breakthroughs in energy and medicine and improve education, math, and science. What happened to integration of the arts? I actually Googled arts and budget cuts. It's incredible how many articles, look at that, that came up saying the arts go first, whether it's institutions, organizations, or educational schools. And as an artist and as a cognitive neuroscientist, I cannot stress enough the value and importance 
importance of the arts, to creativity, to cognitive development, to learning, to language, to being human. So what is my take home message? Embrace the sciences, embrace the arts, embrace the integration of both. And yes, ignore that scientist who tells you you're wasting your time learning Beethoven, I was told that. And ignore the artist that looks at you weirdly for solving math equations, I was also told that. Follow the steam towards innovation and discovery.